Well, this is the important news for you that it bears repeating. Drug Regulator Pharmacy and Poisons Board, PPB, is recalling a batch of Johnson & Johnson children's cough syrup. It announced on Thursday, a day after Nigeria recalled the same batch of medication under the Benelin pediatric brand. Nigeria's health regulator said laboratory tests on the syrup showed a high level of diethylene, diethylene glycol, which has been linked to the deaths of dozens of children in Gambia, you Uzbek, you that is Uzbekistan and Cameroon since 2022 in one of the world's worst waves of poisoning from oral medication. Pharmacy and Poisons Board said in a statement it had commenced investigation and advised that sales of certain batches of the products be halted and returned to suppliers. And here is the alert that he had given that Pharmacy and Poisons Board wishes to inform the public that it has received information uh, regarding a medical product alert and recall of Benelin pediatric uh, 100 MLS calf syrup. Uh, that is the batch number 329304. You might want to look at that by the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, that is NAFDAC of Nigeria. This calf syrup manufactured by Johnson & Johnson, uh, South Africa is being recalled due to quality concerns arising from an acceptable high level of diethylene glycol detected through laboratory analysis conducted by the agency. Diethylene glycol is a contaminant which is toxic to humans when consumed and can prove fatal. Toxic effects or toxic effects can include abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, inability to pass urine, headache, altered mental state and acute kidney injury which may lead to death. The product details is as follows and is given here as well a name of the product, Benelin Pediatric 100 uh, milliliters syrup, and uh, that is a batch number 329304. Uh, date of manufacture is May 2021. Date of expiry is April 2024. So if you have that particular batch, make sure you discard it. And if you have no sorting idea on how it looks, I think a picture there also will come in handy for you if you bought anything like this from the from the chemist from a, a, a pharmacy that has been given that particular expiry date, make sure you are discarding it. Following receipt of this information, the PPP has immediately commenced investigation. The agency also initiated rapid res response, which includes sampling of batches of Benelin pediatric syrup that are within shelf life for the purpose of screening of levels of ethylene glycol and diethylene glycol so that is the latest uh, just to remind you as well them that are having young ones all right now we have atwoli he's saying let's not set limit for union leaders uh, secretary general says union uh, essential free and independent organization remember he has been quarter chief quarter chief for almost half a quarter that is almost a quarter, not half a quarter, almost a quarter of a century, right? And it's all about leadership. And this is a bill that is being sponsored by Eddie O'Cage. It's the Labor Relations Amendment Bill 2024. And he says it is ill-conceived and retrogressive. And this is not just with Koto, also we have the Federation of Kenya as well. Uh, I wonder what uh, Martin Law will say. Or let's just begin with, uh, I wonder also if uh, Executive Director of the Kenya National Civil Congress has been there for donkey years. Before I became Executive Director of the Kenya National Civil Society Center, not Center, Congress, yes, Center. Um, I was uh, the presiding convener or president of the Civil Society Reference Group which in its constitution had term limits. Mm -hmm. I was elected on, uh, in 2015, re-elected in 2018. When it came to September 2021, I organized an annual general assembly at which members elected a new leadership. To my utter dismay, that organization does not even exist. 
uh, the office was vacated within five months of my departure. Um, so at times, what therefore that tells me from my experience is that in some of these, uh, you know, voluntary bodies, membership-based organizations, um, I think, uh, Brother Tuoli, because uh, I see him as a comrade in the struggle, mm. um, is right that trade unions are civil society organizations that should be autonomous and must not be regulated by law. Um, and, and, and members shepherded in a particular way that uh, appears to negate the principle of um, every vote should count during elections. I, I think I would be concerned if, for example, um, trade unions were not holding regular elections. That may require a certain law to ensure that they follow their own constitution uh, on the basis of which they were registered. Uh, but this um, proposed amendment, in my view, um, is undue interference uh, by the state into bodies that should be self-regulating, mm. organizations that should be left to be autonomous and conduct their own affairs, provided they do not engage in any you know, thing that you know, would be considered criminal um, in a court of law. Uh, and, and so I, I, I want to urge uh, Senator Eddie um, Okech. Okech that uh, whereas it is it is entitlement to make a name uh, so Okech. that when he will be seeking uh, re-election, he will say I'm the one who sponsored this or that bill. Uh, I think the honor that you know the people like Atuli bring to this country is that by virtue of their ex vast experience, they get recognized even within the region. I think he has an office in Algiers. He has some mm -hmm. office in Geneva, in Geneva, ILO, and so on. That, in my view, is, is, is an honor that, you know, a newly elected person would not be able to, uh, to master. And, and, and therefore, I, I agree with those that are opposed to that bill that, uh, you know, let civil society groups be autonomous. In fact, I would use the opportunity to call on the state uh, to do as they promised. In the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto, they promised to, implement, to operationalize the Public Benefit Organizations Act that would rejuvenate the NGO sector. Uh, but we know that this regime that is in power uh, interfered or attempted seriously to interfere with the independence of trade unions. You remember it was during the Jubilee administration in which the current president was the deputy president that sought to create another parallel group called the Trade Union Congress. In fact, there are people who used to mischievously call it Tuk Tuk. A trade Union Congress that collapsed on its own lack of experience and, 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 and leadership and uh, attempts to use in individuals like uh, former Secretary General of uh, NAT, Socion, uh, did not materialize. So I see this as a rare guard. And also coming from an, a senator elected on an opposition ticket, uh, I think uh, Eddie uh, would be better advised um, to abandon this effort and let trade unions you know, govern themselves autonomously as they ought to be. So are you aware that uh, Tuoli actually is just one year shy from serving as you know, the longest member of or the Secretary General of Kotu uh, he will be suppressing the former president of Kenya, President Moi, who has ruled this country for over 24 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. right? For 24 years, so he's just one year shy to be at par and maybe beyond. Yes, so I mean, there is, there is a difference between somebody serving as president. You know, the idea of term limits um, was introduced because of the enormity of power and influence and resources that are put at the disposal of people holding certain offices. In, in, the, in, the, in the United yeah, States yeah, of America, for example, mm. uh, in the United States of America, for example, well, senators, general. senators, I've, mm. I've known uh, d senators and particularly those who have been elected on, uh, on the Democratic Party ticket that have served for half a century, 50 plus years, are only retiring when they so choose. And the people have always reaffirmed their faith and confidence in them. Uh, this is an elective position. Um, 
if at all he has certain influence, then it is basically built around his persona, uh, which we should not, you know, envy him about because uh, it is him who has managed to build that, you know, a, a persona around himself. Um, and, and, you know, um, those achievements that um, uh, seem to be, you know, uh, bothering certain quarters, people in certain quarters. I, 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 I would therefore not, you know, put um, somebody serving as president side by side with somebody serving as a secretary general of an umbrella trade union uh, side by side because the two uh, are like day and night in my view. All right, the two, they're like day and night, cheese and chalk. This is what uh, <laughs> uh, we have <laughs> Chachin Suba saying. But I want to hear from Kiprota Rafkirwa on this development as well. Uh, you know, there's uh, a saying that says, too much uh, visit, where's the welcome? Mm -hmm. It seems uh, the welcome mm -hmm. here is not getting worn at all. Mm -hmm. What is the secret? Maybe people want to know. But the fact that this legislation has been raised, uh, there's something which is cooking that we do not know. Well, I don't know whether they are... And you know, Churchill Suba will defend his space because this is a civil society, this mm. is the voice of the people, so he cannot really go against the grain. Well, for, for me, I, I, I take it that... Um, I hope the legislation is not targeting at all, because yeah. uh, it is unfortunate that we have to pass a piece of legislation... To target someone. To target an individual, because... Uh, there are natural attrition processes, including going through an election. And if people, for some reason, still believe that a trolley can offer that, that service or any other official of the union, so be it. Uh, the only uh, refrain that I could uh, give to Subajachi is that um, when you leave an organization and the organization does not last five months, it, it means, means you never did proper cessation plan. A bad leader. Mm -hmm. You are not a good leader, you should have allowed other people and you should have identified people who are likely to sustain that organization uh, for, for some time. Because history is that uh, we hand over each from me to the next person uh, should be that uh, that person should do better than me. But if you realize the person does not go, do as well as you've done, it means there is a problem. And the next time you, you lead an organization like the one now you are leading, Organize a session plan and identify some of the individuals. Let them compete fairly and, uh, because anything good can be bettered. And uh, that should be the rule of the game. All right, so yeah, we have elections of being a natural attrition. So what else will be a natural attrition? <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Elections are not natural. <laughs> 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 yes, being economical. <laughs> I think, I think That's what I'm saying, it's a natural attrition. <laughs> the natural attrition, of course, uh, is death. You know is why, death. You know yeah. why we have a discussion around, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 around about. Yeah. 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 Round about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, I think the natural attrition we can complete is death you can work until you die. But I think um, uh, on a light, that's on a light note, but I think um, if actually the, the amendment of this act is um, targeting at all, that I think that is uh, not fair because uh, after at all, there will be other people who will come. So, but, but, I, but I think if it is for the good, for the good, it is not just the court. We yeah. have other agencies as well. Yeah, that's Maybe what I'm we can saying. Try. Federation of Kenya uh, employees. There are many. Well. There are very many. That's why I'm coming. To, uh, I'm Jackie coming Mugo. to that. I'm coming to that. I'm okay. saying if okay. it is for the general trend unions in, in, in the whole country to bring sobriety, to bring fairness and representation, etc., then that is fine, because you see. The, the challenge with one person working or uh, representing you for too long is that uh, you create a kind of, um, uh, a, a, a kind of uh, picture in the people's mind that without you, nothing can go on. And sometimes when you leave that organization, whether it's trained union or other, it, it, there is always a gap. And there's a big, huge gap. And uh, that, that, that union is likely to collapse or, t or even if it has to survive to face serious challenges in terms of leadership and management. So if um, the bill has got, I've not looked at the bill because I haven't seen what 
the, the sanitized proposing, they need to study it carefully and see whether there are elements which are going to promote governance and leadership in trade union and bring change to the betterment of the people who are being led. Otherwise, too much, you know, uh, too much, um, you know, represent, you know, you know, taking too long representing people in one position uh, may, may weaken the union and then strengthen an individual. Because without that person, it's like the union is not existing. So I think the, the individual, the personality of the individual and the union should be at par. So that you are given a term maybe of five years, maybe another five years, and um, that can be looked into. And, and, and then you give chance to somebody else who can also take the, the challenge. But this one, because now the case in point is that at all is, I think, one of the longest serving um, you know, uh, Secretary General of uh, Kotu, then I think um, uh, he, he might feel un uncomfortable and the people support him, of course, in the union. They also may feel uncomfortable. But um, sometimes we may take very tough decisions if we have to make changes which are going to make our unions even be better in terms of governance, in terms of leadership. So the, the influence an individual can put in a, an organization uh, may overshadow all other people who are there. And, and then it's like the, 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 the affecting the leadership and the governance and the structures that are put in place. Because I, I can't imagine if you've been there for 20, 25 or more years, what new things do you really, can you really offer than what really? You know, in any leadership, by the way, Ibarra, if you are in any position for five years, and another five years, you have somehow exhausted all the, the, the kind of uh, the, the freshness and newness and the, 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 what you have. That's why those time limits are there. Otherwise, if you stay too long, you become complacent and you don't even have uh, anything new to offer. You only, you know, you know, duplicate what you have just given at the beginning. So I think too, too long, may, staying too long in our position may weaken the unions. But I think the bill should be studied so that it does it actually, studied well, so that it does it target individuals. But I know this is Kenya, and people will argue and say that uh, you can make laws, maybe you want to change somebody, and when that person is not there, you make mm. another one, another mm. one. I think that's the, the, the wrong approach. That's so it. me, I'm appealing, let, let the bill be studied well. If it has anything that would make our unions better and be served better, then that is okay. But actually not really targeting individuals and personalities. But we shouldn't uh, look at it that it's targeting individuals because I've said, can we broaden the scope and try and see who can actually fall within this remit of this particular bill, right? Aside from let, what you see in your court. Yeah. Propose a law so for senators. Can we hear from... Tom yeah. for himself. For, Ma no. for Martin. Martin. Also, I think even from a sport of fraternity, you know, even mm. since those donkey years, when we were growing up, we could hear certain individuals as being just the chairpersons of Athletics Associ Association of Kenya yeah. for the longest time. Yeah. So uh, this will broaden the scope, uh, maybe, you, you know, you if you try and look... Uh, if we try and open our eyes not to just never gaze on KOTU. Trade unions, as indeed any other associations, exist for a purpose. To the extent that you are in, in their leadership or in the leadership of those organizations and they still re-elect you, then it means that you are still relevant in their uh, eyes. Now, we must be careful not to try and breach the constitution by some of the legislation. Because when you look at the freedom of association, when you look at the fundamental rights and freedoms in the Constitution, it allows me to associate, it allows me to offer myself for leadership, and it allows others to elect me or otherwise, and for as long as they want, and as long as I want. So that there isn't a place where you can say that this is too long. Now. When you look at uh, organizations such as the NRA, you know, you only, you only know the era, NRA or, 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 or the other, the National Rifles Association, the, the big movement in the U.S. And its leader was there for a very long time. In fact, he just left the other day. The point being that every time you are still relevant in an association or in a, in, in a position, elective position, especially where there's lobbying and there is, uh, you know, jostling, then it means that you are the right person. So Atuoli is 
still understood to be the main guy in the labor movement, for example, or those who are in the FKE, the Federal Federation of Kenya mm. Employers, it means that they are still being found to be relevant for that sector. The day there will be dissatisfaction, obviously, that will lead to some changes. I know you think that 24 years, 25 years is very long, but in an elected position, if you are consistently being re-elected, then that's not a problem. You were talking about senators in the U.S. and you were talking about Democrats. No, McCain, uh, the late John McCain was a senator for very long and he was even ran for presidency and vice president and he still went back as You're a senator. You're forgetting Kipruto so. here. He's been uh, no, a member of parliament. 20 years is not enough. 20 years. In geological terms and political terms, 20 years is a joke. Mm. So we're talking about 40, 50 years <laughs> who have been uh, being elected. Yeah, and by the way, yeah, no. these elections in the U.S. happen every two years. Now, that's the other thing we don't understand. At that level, senators are elected every two years. And if they're being elected every two years, it's no longer something that, I, that, that, that is a do or die the way ours is because it's four years or five years and we come with everything, including all our stolen uh, monies. At that point, you are yeah. working, you're being re-elected. Every two years, there's an election happening in the U.S. There's an election happening, uh, affecting House of Representatives, affecting governors uh, and, and, and uh, political parties. It's just a four, the president who has a four-year term. Everybody else has a two-year term being mm -hmm. re-elected re all the time. Is it two years? Is it two years? Four? Yes. It is four years, but uh, it happens every two years. Mm -hmm. But if I'm elected this, this year now, 2024, mm -hmm. I'll be re-elected 2028. There's a staggered there election staggered, happening. Yeah, yeah. so it's staggered oh, yeah. in a way that... Uh, it's in certain year. So yeah. you're having elections in different, yeah. depending on the clusters, yeah. elections yeah. every two years. Yeah. And it's affecting membership of these houses and yeah. even governors and so yeah. on. For the presidential yeah. area, it is. No, yeah. It's presidential for years. Yeah. Across. Yeah. Across but four yeah. years. Four. But even for senators, they are four years, but uh, they, are, they are staggered. Well, in a way well, that... Uh, we'll check that before we leave here. Because every uh, election okay. is happening we'll at that check. level almost two, every two years. Mm -hmm. so, but we'll check what, what they are actually... Just confirm. Yeah, we'll confirm. Yeah. The point I'm making is that if people are re-electing you over and over, nobody should bring a law that stops them from electing you. And again, we are not talking about individuals. Mm. Because individuals, we put them aside. We're talking mm. about institutions. Mm. If, the inst if the people of Transoya think that this was the best... Uh, no, Chirangani, think that this was their best MP. They have every right to re-elect him as long as he's, uh, he's presenting himself. Should we say that there must be term limits there? No. Uh, earlier on, of course, when uh, uh, you know, Churchill was spoke, talking, there are reasons behind term limits, particularly in upper offices. And also, even for organizations, if, if it's our policy that after two years or after four years you go, that's fine. Even for churches, for example, uh, bishops are, are elected for a term, their term exp uh, ends, they go, or elders, or deacons. So there is a place where it helps because you are saying there are enough of us to circulate. So not, no one person should be sitting in the hem throughout. That also helps the organization to survive. And that's why uh, Churchill's organization never survived, because he was the only star <laughs> that hung around there. Yeah. And once he expired, uh, <laughs> four, years, four months down the line, uh, uh, there was darkness. <laughs> so that's not what we're saying. On this table, anyone, anyone of us can be able to hold office for five years, another one takes over, yeah. except, uh, except for Churchill, because if Churchill starts, we might all die. So we, <laughs> <laughs> we can spread around and say, we have 20, 30 years where every one of us has held an office or has had their time in office, and we survive. So I would think that that uh, bill is uh, not well intended and not well thought out. And in the end of it, it might be a violation of the Constitution. I haven't looked at it well, but its intentions are a violation. You can sense the spirit of, uh, of it, even, even yeah. if you've not uh, perused mm -hmm. it. You can yes. actually sense it. But uh, this brings the question of, uh, because the civil servants have been frustrated by the remittance from uh, you know the states as far as the pension is concerned for the last six months they have yeah. not received that as well uh, I don't know if they are receiving their pension so are you receiving your pension on time I think uh, I heard you say for, for for the last is it almost 12 years yeah. this is the first time in, in the history of 
receiving yeah, a pension that, from government uh, that it pension, has delayed. Yeah, it has been coming late. It has been coming late. It has been coming late. Otherwise, usually, uh, for the other almost uh, 10 years or so, on Christmas, uh, or the, 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 the month of Christmas, uh, December, we used to receive almost like uh, five days before Christmas, which means they knew that these retirees need some bit of money around Christmas time. But of late, you, you get it either on 27th or almost uh, some of it is built to the next month. But uh, Dibal, allow me also to correct uh, our English. Natural attrition process is not limited to death. Indeed, of course, I agree. I agree. It's not <laughs> it can be relocation. It can of be of course, of course. Especially yeah, when it comes to human no, resources. I was just trying. I was just trying to bring another concept there. That, yeah. uh, <laughs> you saw how naturally everyone picked it as a natural attrition. <laughs> yes, and uh, but and I'll, I'll also explain. I've, I've checked the U.S. Constitution, so we'll explain the issue. Yeah, uh, yes. uh, continue, continue. Terms, continue. But there are various classes. Yeah. So, I, I think it's important, and it's not even about retirees alone. It is also about other people who are supposed to get certain benefits. You know, when a spouse uh, passes, or, um, passes on, and uh, possibly you are the beneficiary, some people, they take almost up to three years before they get the, the benefits. And yet, really, essentially, the benefit to a spouse or to the those who are left behind is supposed to cushion them against certain uh, vagaries of, a, of the economy. So it has become a problem, and yet, and, under the law, the, 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 what I understand is that pension uh, benefits uh, should form the first charge of any monies, other than, of course, the external debt that we pay. So I do not understand anymore why this regime seems to be late. You realize even the Catholic Church is complaining that they are owed about 2 billion shillings. And yet, a lot of services, or more than 40% of the services in hospitals are rendered by uh, faith-based organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, you remember also what uh, they are saying. They have been, they've been paying 15,000 mm -hmm. for doctors who are coming here on sabbatical leave and uh, giving very good services. Uh, they have now raised it to 500,000. Just you just want to collect 500,000 from a miserable doctor who is not earning anything. He's just come here to serve. And as they come, they come with a lot of facilities uh, because they mobilize those facilities uh, uh, abroad, including, of course, the issue of uh, what has been happening in Tenwek, where some of the doctors who have been serving us very well with um, volumes of cataracts that they, they brought in, they are now being told you have to pay half a million shillings for you to continue serving. And yet the same organization, through that kind of collaboration of doctors, has invested in Hupomet close to uh, 30 billion uh, Kenya shillings. So you are collecting just a mere 5 million, if there are 10 of them, uh, and uh, you are losing almost a billion. Because some of these organizations, they do it on a voluntary basis. So if you are punishing somebody coming here to serve you for free, then you are losing the essence of understanding what is happening in that particular organization. <laughs> yep. So don't you think uh, maybe also with the uh, inflation rate that has been there for donkey years, if you're still charging uh, that particular amount that uh, was 15,000? Well, it should be talking. You just, you just, just bring it to the market rate as it, it is right now, going with, to, with oh. the inflation rate oh. for the donkey years that it has been since the 60s as well. No, but you see... Don't that you think also this is a, is a genuine reason? But, uh, the, the, but, but there must be a yardstick, there must be a parameter. But you see, if we do everything the Sakai way, then we are losing even the, the golden egg and even the goose that is laying it. Because essentially, that was supposed to be something like token. But, but it should not be sometimes, some... Sometimes, even uh, if they put out this particular rates or raising of it, mm -hmm. because everyone has become oversensitive as it is right now, that uh, even if it's a genuine raising of the rates, we'll always see it with Zakayo tinted, you know, spectacles. But, so you, you tend to see, oh, Zakayo is still trying to overtax us. Uh, but the bar, something should not be dramatic. Even if you wanted to raise my salary, and when I was first elected, my salary was 18,000. Then we moved to 24. Then we moved to 35. 
then we move to 70. Something must be gradual. You cannot move from 15,000 to 500,000. Really, what is the, what is the parameter? What, what yardstick are you using? And why don't you really console widely within that particular industry so that you don't chase away some investments that were coming? Remember Tenwek, the other day they built a hospital for 300 million and President Uru Kenyatta at that particular time went to open and he made a remark that this is something that will not have, uh, is not easy to find in government circles, that you are bringing a serious eye unit uh, with a little as 300 million. When in the same capacity, the government would easily spend a billion. Uh, for, for the same to be achieved. So we, we must also be, be careful so that we don't just unrattle uh, some of the corners that are uh, allowing this country to advance in terms of support from other institutions. Rattle, you mean? Yeah. Right. Uh, Martin wanted to just give yeah, uh, a uh, correction on, there. I can see also the Yes. That the, uh -huh. There are three classes of senators in yeah. the U.S. Com com Constitution. Yes. Class one, class two, class three. Yes. Now every uh, elections are for six term. Uh, one term is six years, mm -hmm. but every two years a class is being subjected to elections. Mm -hmm. yes. So that when you see there are elections every year, it's not that uh, every everyone is being subjected yeah. to that. But the term is six years. Yes. But generally the elections are being uh, done every two years for every one of those classes because yes. they are variegated. So they are. They're coming in at different types. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So they're staggered. They're staggered. They're staggered yes. But the main point, point is And that also attrition is, comes in is not about death. <laughs> <laughs> Natural you attrition. Have <laughs> you really have to rub it in. <laughs> when you add the word natural, natural. it requires the, 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 the word natural. It takes a natural dynamic. Yes. But attrition as it stands. No, no, no. Just, just, just Google. Yeah. Natural attrition. Just Google. Okay, or fine, just check we'll in a dictionary. We'll yeah. agree. We'll agree. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but we want to bring the whole aspect of even retirement uh, because uh, there was a very interesting article that uh, was on the BBC and the story as well. That And this hasn't been the debate that we've been also debating in Parliament. Should we change the retirement age from 60 where it is right now to 55? Yeah. And I think before it was 55. Yeah. And there's still yeah, issues like to do with pension, yeah. that the country yeah. didn't have enough money to actually uh, pay the pensioners mm -hmm. who are actually yes. going for their pension. Mm -hmm. So we had to raise this to 60. Yeah. There has been a debate to take it back to 55. But people are uh, asking questions. Should we also just rethink about retirement at the end of the day? That uh, who came up with the, the retirement you know, phenomenon or aspect of it? And I believe it was mm -hmm. coming, I had uh, yesterday from uh, Engineer Patrick Obat that this first of all was um, under the premise of the, the widowers. Mm -hmm. That is where pension really came off, just to cushion, as you're saying. Yeah. And the people now have to go through the time. But now life has changed. Mm -hmm. People are living to, I mean, lifestyle has changed. Yeah, you uh, can actually live to 100, 100. and you're still strong, and uh, you still have the mental vigor uh, and the rigor of it. Should we reconsider the retirement? No. And uh, is retirement uh, a death net to people that they think once they've retired now, you retract to the village, and you wait for your death because people have different aspects and perception on how they receive retirement. That once I get mm -hmm. my wheelbarrow, mm -hmm. uh, I get my, my, my golden ward sped, mm -hmm. it is now sort of a death knell to me that uh, I'm not required anymore. But you've seen also, yes. just a moment before I finish, uh, you've seen also in the government, they're trying to recall some of his expertise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, people have not transferred the knowledge and the, the required skills to the other generation so that uh, there is a vacuum and people have to be reskilled but there's a there's a huge gap do we need to rethink that i let's, think i think we i do. think, we I, think do. I think uh, we'll come but, to you yeah, let's hear from I, professor I, I think um issues about retirement um the the age you know for example in africa we we tend to have a belief that the the, the older you become the wiser you are um, this is because of the experience, that's what we call the, the experience. But um, I think um, the issue of uh, lowering the, the, the retirement into 55 or maybe considering to be 60 or 65 
I, I think the, the, the whole issue is about uh, unemployment, which is uh, very, very rampant in this country. And I think um, lowering the, the age limit or maybe adding more years to the age limit is just a way I think the government sometimes work to see how they can have uh, more new people in the, the you know, employing, in the employment, the, the formal employment. I'm not talking of non-formal, non but the, the formal employment in the government payrolls and so forth. But I think um, the other many ways in which maybe the government or you know the society may think of how they can include the young people uh, to be in the formal employment. Um, but but issues about age uh, lowering the age limit will, will receive a lot of opposition in this country. For example, in the universities where I work, if you tell. Um, a professor to retire at 50, you will not get professors. Because by the time you, 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 are, you become a professor... You are around 50. You are 50, then you are told to go home. Then uh, how, how do you really proceed? Because if you look at the years accumulatively, maybe 18 years in uh, maybe in secondary education, some maybe four years in the, uh, you know, the university, first degree, go for second degree, go for that degree, then that one you finish, then come for publication. Before you finish all that, you're already 50. So now, the issue about retirement, I think they can be handled differently in different sectors. And they also look for more um, to other ways of trying to bring people into em employment rather than just um, you know saying that we are going to retire people just because we want new people to come in. Because even if you get new people, then those people will also be 55. They will also be 60. They will also be old. And if we have not looked for other ways of, you know, creating employment, that problem will persist and it will continue affecting the economy of the country. So can we just bring, you know, sobriety in the whole issue of employment so that we don't affect people's lives and even affect very key factors, even in the, the judiciary. Mm -hmm. Before you become a judge at like that level, that's why they stay longer. You also have so many years you work it. So there, there are so many sectors. If you look, the reason why that age limit is there, maybe at, it was 55 and 60. And by the way, if you go to the UK, because uh, we, are borrowed, we borrowed a lot of, you know, you know um, a lot of um, things from the constitution of the U UK. They were retiring people at 55 so that they go there in their country and work so that because they are still young, so they, they retire at 65. So, so, so you cannot retire in Kenya, then you go to the UK and then you, you just go home. So I think that age limit of 55 was with a purpose and then we inherited and we put a lot in the constitution until when recently we changed to 60. So changing, uh, changing or lowering the, the retirement in Kenya from uh, 60 to 55 will receive a lot of opposition and again, you will lose so many people who are experienced who can fit in those jobs. Because not every young person, just because of age, in quote, that is able to occupy some, you know, some kind of um, uh, employment, uh, you know, uh, positions. Because some of them, of course, will require a lot of experience. Even in parliament, you can ask Mwajimuya here. If you have been in parliament for 10 years, you seem to be more experienced. And at the time you are told you can no longer be elected as a member of parliament of uh, consistency. Yeah, I think that's why parliamentarians, the, 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 theirs was not so much affected like the governors, like the, the senators. You call the it the first priority, was it so far? Uh, so I think... Yeah. In, the, in the National Assembly, is it called the first priority members? Oh. First priority are those that have served longer. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm asking, the first yes. priority. That's what I'm asking you, yes, sir. Yes, yes the first yeah. priority. Yeah. Those, so you've served here yeah. yeah, because now you've garnered the experience? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And even when it comes to even allocating uh, those who are supposed to make contributions on the floor of the house, they will also look at seniority. Yeah. The first priority. Yeah, yes. because, because the, the, the more you, you stay in that position, the more you more you get, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you're experienced. And you meet so, so many people. You meet so many people. So if you everything, you cap it at 10 right. years or five years, so then you are, lose, you are going to lose a lot and, as a and, country. And you know, Dr. Martin Law doesn't know that by the time I lost elections, I was among the top five who had remained consistently in parliament. Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. time, yes. By right. the time I lost, I was among the, the five, the other ones being uh, President Kibaki and uh, mm. 
Kalonzo when, when, when I used to appear before, so you were the first priority in that particular yes, house. I, I, was, uh, I was very senior. Even now, mm -hmm. they fear me. I'm very senior. <laughs> <laughs> When it comes to this issue of retirement, I think what we need to do is a blend. Yeah. Mm. And when people retire, really they are not supposed to be sort of ignored. I'm not suggesting that I should be recalled for any reason. Mm. But in some countries, even here, let, let, let alone the UK, here, Mzewa Ryoba, who was a one-time chief justice, a one-time uh, chancellor of the uh, University of Dar es Salaam, is in his 80s, but from time to time when there is uh, serious discussion in Tanzania, he is recalled to come and he give his views so that we are able to build historical perspective mm -hmm. and he gives us institutional memory. Mm -hmm. What happened in the 60s, mm -hmm. in the 70s, mm -hmm. in the 80s, mm -hmm. then you compare what should happen in Tanzania for another 50 years. So in Kenya, we have a problem that uh, if you are a former member like me, somebody assumes that uh, you, you no longer know anything because people do not elect you. People don't elect you because you know. They elect you because you are relevant to their situation on the ground. But as you get into parliament, there is so much knowledge that you gain, either out of school, out of experience, out of interaction with other members, that uh, from time to time, you should be relevant for the country to share with you that particular body of knowledge. Well, right. Bible, what I wanted to add on to this. Discussion. I just wanted to put it to yeah, yeah. You, you will add. Let me. Can I just throw yeah. this in because I think uh, I don't want us mm. to uh, never gaze on just the 55, mm. just to open yeah. up the whole discussion about yeah. retirement. Because we are, and we have BlackRock, uh, which has invested heavily also in the Nairobi Security Exchange. You've, you've cho they've chosen uh, to invest in our, uh, in our bows, and he mm -hmm. says here that in March, investment investment management firm BlackRock released its annual letter to the company's investors. Its CEO, Larry Fink, sounded a warning for workers hoping to retire comfortably and financially secure in their 60s. As global life expectancy grows, social safety nets fray, and cost of living spikes, Fink warned that retirement at age 65 won't be possible for many, even most people. Retirement is a much harder proposition than it was 30 years ago, wrote Fink, and it will be a much harder proposition 30 years from now. From 2000 to 2019, global life expectancy increased from 67 to 73. By 2050, the UN expects one in six people worldwide will be aged 65 or older. And as the population ages, many countries will soon reach a point where more people are leaving the workforce than are entering it. In the UK, the past, uh, in the UK that point may be reached by 2029 in Brazil, by 2035 uh, in India, by 2048 and by US, uh, in the US by 2053. Life expectancy has been continued to go up since the mid-1850s in the UK, uh, according to one of the professors there. So the thing is they're pushing the boundary. No, and, and yeah. so they're they, raising the boundary. It's, it's not they. Is, and, and, uh? It's not they. What we are saying is that there is the economics behind retirement. Mm -hmm. uh, my position would be that retiring at 55 is a joke for any country because that is the age in which you are just getting your people maturing and therefore able to even work more. Mm. Uh, if you look at it, if you retire at 55, and I'll give you an example of my late dad. My late dad retired at 50 and he lived up to 97. Mm -hmm. And he was on a pension for all that time. So the period in which he worked and the period in which he retired almost was same. Our mother-in-law whose um, husband died in 1974, she's been on pension for that long. And she figures it doesn't matter how much it is, but there's something in it. So basically what we're looking at is that the economics, there's financial projections, they actu actually serve to help us to talk about retirement. So it's, as, it's something that should be tied onto some figures. 55 is not feasible anymore. So 60, even 60 is not feasible anymore. You are looking at 65. Mm. But again, you are looking at even other institutions where retirement isn't happening until 70 for, for judges, for academics, mm. 
uh, because you can retire and then take on a contract for even another five years as long as you are still able, uh, you are healthy and you are so, and so on. It is not, it, you do not become a professor in this country until you are way into your late 40s, mm. if not 50s. Mm. So if you retire a professor at 55, with all that knowledge, you have actually uh, lost it. And that's why it's important that it goes all the way to 70, 75. So uh, there are the economics of it, but there's also the realities of it. If you go to the international development community, most people working in the international development community are actually in their 60s. And they are productive, and they are efficient and effective. And uh, that's the point at which the ball, uh, people like Mwishmua here, have no, no business, they bring up babies unless he's on his own frolic. Uh, they are all grown up, they are in their spaces. He can go anywhere. You can take him even to be a general consul uh, in any country, and <laughs> the only thing he'll be missing is cows and those kind of things. But generally, he is available to serve the nation. Mm -hmm. So we must look at that from uh, an economics perspective, a productivity perspective, the contribution that you bring in. Mm -hmm. There is less uh, downtime for a person in their 50s, 60s than for people in their 30s, 40s, because, you know, there's uh, the issue of you know, reproduction, there's the issue of uh, attending to babies and so on for ladies and so on. So there is a lot that you do at that age, which now you don't have to do when you're in your 50s, and that way you are more productive for the country. So I would be very uh, amazed if anybody is looking at retirement as just let's get rid of these people and employ others because you are not looking at the pension factor which you have to keep on uh, you know, uh, paying. What Mwishmua uh, here is not telling you that he may have come in with a salary of 18, 24 and then later. But he went out with a pension that's very handsome. So he sits in these studios talking <laughs> and as he lives here, as he lives here, he, his, his, his account is being created. Ding, bingling, and, and, and he's okay. He can come in the morning drive here. And so what I would do if I was uh, in a position is to use these pensioners even more, so that you get more out of them. Because already you are paying for their upkeep. Uh, you are maintaining them. There are such a cost to maintain. So we must look at it that way so that we actually get more from these people with experience. Mm. This is a man you should be sending to, yeah. uh, to, mm. to address parliament mm. and you are not telling him that you are going to pay him a consultant. Just tell him, you go. Mm. First of all, it's very prestigious for him to go back to parliament, mm. just take tea there <laughs> and talk to his peers and you don't have to pay. But if you send this young man called Churchill Suba, he'll tell you, <laughs> where's my check? And so on. So <laughs> we must make sure that we balance these uh, skills and use them. Indeed. Uh, yeah. Even uh, as we take a short break, uh, we shall hear from you, Churchill. C could we consider, because we have very good minds that sometimes we don't utilize. We were talking about yeah. institutional memory. Yes. Uh, you remember Moriwori. Uh, yeah. There's so many others that are out yeah. there yeah. that we don't really tap into their, you know, their expertise mm -hmm. and uh, also their rigors of intellectual uh, yeah. capacity and, mm -hmm. and vigor that they still have. Mm -hmm. Could we consider? maybe in this country, like what we do have with the African Union, that uh, they are thinking of, you know, coming up with the Council of Elders, yeah. where we have the likes of Obasanjo, where they, you know, they meet yeah. on the round table, mm -hmm. just as the head of state uh, prior to that, mm -hmm. uh, who have been serving their countries as uh, statesmen, and now they are also tapping into their knowledge, they are tapping into their wisdom, mm -hmm. where we have a collection of them also, you know, sometimes they can come in parliament and address some of the issues <coughs> that we are going through as a country. Right, we've uh, seen Dr. Nikal on this table, especially on this issue of uh, Dr. Strike. I mean, the, the sort of wisdom and knowledge that really comes to bear yeah. from him is something that uh, you know we should think about uh, yeah. and we should also consult uh, when we have a crisis. But can we have a council? I think let's let's talk about that as we take a short break. You're watching Wongozi today here on Morning Prime. We we'll see you on the other side of the break. We we'll continue to press with the conversation and we shall be looking at also what. Uh, will be happening as far as the doctor's track is concerned with the Kenya Medical Association also joining the fray as well. Don't go away.